We are back at it again, part two of parenting rules I do not follow as a mom. <gasps> What's that now? If you haven't seen the first part, I listed entirely different things and I'll link it down below and you can watch it next right after this video. For those of you who don't know, I am a mama too. I have a 14 year old son named Jesse and a five year old daughter named Olivia. And like with all videos, here's my little disclaimer. You do you. Obviously your kids and parenting style is different than mine. They're not going to be the exact same. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly okay. All kids are different and you have to do what works best for you. It seems to be on YouTube, there is a lot of rules and stuff that you're supposed to follow to be a good mom. There's so many rules now. Don't punish your kids. Don't say no to your kids. Uh and I'm here to say that not every single rule is made to be followed. So I'm going to tell you the ones that we do not abide by. So some of the popular things that people let their kids do is messy eating, especially as babies. It's adorable for them to try to eat food themselves and get it all over their face and high chair and floor and hair and everywhere else in the room. We don't let our kids do that. They're not allowed to be messy eaters. When they're too young to be able to actually properly feed themselves in a reasonable manner, we do it for them. At no point are they allowed to make just a complete teetotal mess of their food, themselves, the plate, table, etc. Along the same line of food, our kids are not allowed to leave the table until everybody at the table is done eating. We see that as a common courtesy that children should learn into adulthood, and so we practice that at a young age. Olivia has a really hard time sitting still, especially when she is done eating. However, she is expected to still stay at the table until everybody is done. When it comes to chores, the kids are expected to help clean, not just their bedroom, but the house as well. Common areas like the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, we obviously tailor it to the different ages. Jesse can do a lot more cleaning than Olivia can, but it doesn't discourage us from having them help clean. When you have them help clean everything in the house, at a young age, it instills that sense of pride in them on keeping a nice household and keeping their area, their space clean. It also discourages them from making bigger messes because they know they'll have to help clean it up. Just this past weekend, Olivia came up to me first thing in the morning. She's like, I've made a list of things that we are going to do, which included nothing but cleaning, and she had decided who all was going to do what form of cleaning. Mommy, what? We were actually going to do chores today. Oh, we have a chore list. Yeah, this one. Okay, what's on our chore list? I see you already picked up the dog toys that Madeline drug back out. What else? Um, first, we left Madeline's. What are we cleaning? The whole entire house and water plants. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Dust the counter and the shelves. Excellent. I have chocolate. Chocolate. And I love that she already at the age of five has that sense of a to-do list of priorities and an organization and leadership skills of who's going to be the one doing it. So another thing we don't do is counting down for them to do something. I don't say, okay, by the time I count to three, you better, or I'm gonna count to five for you two. Like, we do not do that. The kids understand the expectation that when we ask them to do something, they are expected to do it. Jesse's hitting the teenage years and is getting a little less consistent with it than he has been previously. Olivia, at the age of five, is very good at it. Jesse, compared to all other teenagers though, I feel does a fantastic job of doing stuff the first time that he's asked. And along that line, we don't allow the kids to really act out, and especially in public. There is an expectation for our kids to be able to behave properly, especially out in public. I am that mom that can give her child the side eye in a store and the child knows that that is something they should not be doing and they need to stop it. If you are one of those parents <laughs> that allows your child to have a tantrum in the middle of the floor and you sit down there with them and that works for you guys, I'm not judging you. You do you and what works for you guys. That does not work for us in our family. And that's okay. It's okay to be different. 
So another thing that I won't do is order food for my children. When we go out to eat, they have to order their own food as soon as they start talking. Olivia is so quiet and especially with the mask on, it's very rare that the servers can ever hear them or understand what they're saying, but they still have to say it first. It is expected for them to request their meals to the server and then if need be, I'll repeat it or explain more. So our kids are not allowed to have electronics in the bedroom. They do not have TVs, they do have tablets, the tablets are expected to stay in common areas like the living room and are not allowed in the bedroom. Part of that reason is because our children are also not allowed to have unsupervised internet access. Even though they do have like the restricted versions of the tablets, they don't, it's not just a free for all. We still require parent supervision for any form of internet access. Even when Jesse has games, like he wants to play online with his friends, he is never allowed to do that without parent supervision. There are a million reasons for that. I could list a hundred of them off the top of my head, but that's not completely what this video is about. If you want to see that in another vehicle, <laughs> if you want to see that in another video, I can do that later. And another very popular thing that we do not do with our kids is reward charts. We don't use them. We've tried them with Jesse and they've never worked. We have it more set up as here is the expectation and you are expected to do it because that is what is expected of you. Not so much of you have to do this to get a reward. You have to do this to be able to get something in exchange. Because like it or not, there are a million things in our lives of things that we have to do just because they have to be done, not because we're getting something necessarily out of it. Let me know which one of these you do or do not do. Like what are the rules in your household and how do they compare? We're always curious to see like what it is that other parents are doing and what it is the parents are doing outside of what's being said. I see a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of comments on social media about our kids having this or having that. And I think that creates this idea that that applies to everybody. And it's okay if it doesn't apply to you. And it's okay to be able to say to your kids just because it seems like all of your friends have unlimited internet access. It doesn't mean that all kids have unlimited internet access. And I hope this helps you understand that it's okay to also be strict sometimes and not always have to do what the other parents are doing. And that's kind of the point of these videos. And if you liked part two of this video, please give it a thumbs up. So we are also doing an autism edition of parenting rules I do not follow. Please hit the subscribe button so you can watch that one next. And again, if you haven't seen part one, I will link it down below with a few other video suggestions I think you'll like as well. We put out new videos every single Tuesday. I'll see you next week. Bye.